Now, in this video, I need to give you a bunch of nice vocabulary terms. Now, any one of these terms you might find in the English dictionary with some somewhat different definitions. That's fine. Just try not to get confused. Look, in a metaphysics class, the word realism will have a particular definition. In a political science class, the word realism might have a very different definition. In political science, realism is contrasted with idealism. And in metaphysics, realism and idealism are more likely to be synonyms because these are technical terms within particular contexts. In the context of a logic class, in the context of a logic class, the word valid, the word invalid, the word sound, the word unsound, the word statement, the word, uh, the word strong, the word weak, the word cogent, and the word uncogent have uh, particular meanings. Let's, uh, let's look at them. A valid argument is an argument whose premises guarantee the conclusion which is to say a successful deductive argument. In a valid argument, it's not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false at the same time. An invalid argument is any argument that is not valid. In other words, an invalid argument is an argument in which it's not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. An invalid argument is one where it is possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false at the same time. Now, an invalid argument is not necessarily bad one. An invalid argument might be a good inductive argument, so don't assume invalid means bad. Invalid just means not valid. Invalid is a particular kind of good, but not every kind of invalid is bad. Not every absence of good is necessarily a bad. I have a complete absence of good coffee in my teacup here, and that's not bad. It's an absence of one kind of good. Anyway, I don't even like coffee. I like the tea that is in the teacup. It's a good thing, and an inductive argument could be good, even though it's invalid. More vocabulary words in a moment on that. Now, a sound argument is a valid argument that also has true premises. So, if an argument is valid, you still have to ask, does it have true premises? If it is, it's sound. Otherwise, it's unsound. Now, all arguments are either sound or unsound. So, an argument which is invalid is unsound, and an argument which is valid but has one or more false premises is also unsound. So every argument is valid or invalid. Every argument is sound or unsound. And valid arguments which have true premises are sound. And arguments which are not valid are invalid and unsound. Valid arguments which have a false premise are unsound. Now if an argument is invalid, as I said, it might still be a good inductive argument. That is to say, it might be that the argument is just given in order to give good probability for the truth of the conclusion, given the truth of the premises. So you have to ask if it really does have good evidence for its conclusion, if the premises really do establish the probability of the conclusion. What do we call an inductive argument that does this well. An inductive argument that has premises which give good probability for the conclusion. What do you call such an argument? We call it strong. An argument which establishes greater than 50% probability for its conclusion, but less than 100%, is invalid and unsound, but strong. Strong is good. It's a it's one way for an argument to be good. Invalidity and unsoundness are not necessarily bad. Remember, these are technical logic class terms. These are not uh, necessarily entirely in line with the way the, word will be, the words will be used outside of logic class. So a strong argument is one demonstrating with higher probability than 50% that the conclusion is true. And if the premises are also true in a strong argument, then we call it cogent. So, we need a couple more vocabulary words. What if it's not strong? Well, then it's weak. And what is an uncogent argument? Well, it's either a weak one or a strong one without a true premise. The same question you have to ask about a valid argument, you have to ask about a strong argument. If you've established that the premises do provide good support for the conclusion, it's still helpful to ask, are the premises true? Well, it's absolutely necessary if the argument is to be any great practical use. Are the premises true? If it's a valid argument and the premises are true, it's considered sound. If it's a valid argument and the premises are not true, it's an unsound argument. If it's a strong argument and the premises are true, it's cogent. If it's a strong argument and the premises are not all true, at least one of them is false, then the argument is uncogent. If it is a strong argument, sorry, if it is an invalid argument, 
where the premises do not give 100% probability for the conclusion, and where the probability for the conclusion, given the truth of the premises, is less than 50% is 50 or less, then the argument is weak. So, a, a valid argument is one that is either sound or unsound. And if it's valid, it's going to be valid and sound, or valid and unsound, and that's it. But if it's invalid, it's automatically unsound, and it's going to have two other characteristics. It's either going to be strong and weak, strong or weak, and it's either going to be cogent or uncogent. Here are the different ways an argument could line up. An argument might be valid and sound, or valid and unsound, or it might be invalid, unsound, weak and uncogent, or invalid, unsound, strong and uncogent, or invalid, unsound, strong and cogent. And obviously, the better arguments are the ones that are valid and sound, or the ones that are strong and cogent, but also invalid and unsound, because again, these are technical terms from logic class, and invalidity and unsoundness are not necessarily bad things here. Let me uh, clarify two things I might not have specifically said yet. What if an argument establishes with 50% probability, exactly 50%, the truth of its conclusion? Well, then we consider it weak, I'm afraid. An argument is either strong or weak, and if it's strong, then it's probable that the conclusion is true. Well, you don't round up from 50% in logic class. If it's exactly 50%, we classify the argument as not strong. It's strong if the premises have a greater than 50% probability of truth for their conclusion. If the premises render the truth of the conclusion greater than 50% probable. If it's exactly 50% or less than 50%, the argument's weak. Second clarification. Try not to mix up uh, your terms. A statement is either true or false, and that's it as far as we're concerned in logic class. But an argument is not true or false. These are technical terms. A statement is true if it correctly describes reality and it's false otherwise. A statement or a proposition is an assertion that something is the case. And that will be either true or false. True if it correctly describes reality, false otherwise. And those are the only qualities available to a statement as far as logic class is concerned. A statement is true or false, never both and nothing else. An argument is not true or false. An argument is valid or invalid, sound or unsound, strong or weak, cogent or uncogent, except uh, it's not always strong or weak or cogent or uncogent because it's either valid and with true premises, sound or valid and with a false premise, unsound, or it's invalid, unsound, and then it's either strong with a true all true premises and then cogent or invalid, unsound, and strong with at least one false premise and then uncogent, or invalid, unsound, weak, and therefore uncogent. Next clarification. Whether an argument, if you've established that it's valid, is also sound, and whether an argument, if you've established that it's strong, is also cogent, that is to say whether you've determined that the premises, if you've determined that the premises provide good support for the conclusion, whether then the premises are true, making it the best kind of an argument, a cogent or a sound one, whether that is the case is not for the logic class to determine. With maybe a few exceptions, if you're making an argument about logic or something, the determining whether premises of an argument are true is what everything else you study is for. It's actually something you should do with your life once you learn some logic. Use it to figure out some things that are true and some things that are false. But also, you know, if, if you're watching this as a tutorial because you're taking a logic class at the university, great, that's the sort of thing this is here for. Or if you're watching this because you're not at the university and you want to learn some logic anyway, great, that's what these videos are here for. But everything else you study at the university or anywhere else you might be studying, you know, you can study by paying attention and reading some good books and so on. Everything else you're studying is where you find out if the premises are true. We don't establish the truth of premises in the logic class. We just establish whether the premises provide good support for the conclusion, and we learn that that's not the only thing that affects the truth. Uh, sorry, that's not the only thing that affects the quality of an argument. One more thing, strength comes in degrees. 
one argument could be much more strong than another argument. So, for example, uh, supernatural questions about the risen Messiah, Jesus Christ, and the Bible, and things like that. Supernatural questions aside, it seems we have a whole lot of examples of human beings who die. Human beings seem to be mortal. We have a lot of samples of this. So, the argument that because I am a human being, I am mortal, establishes the truth of its conclusion with some darn good probability, well over 90-something percent, 99-something, 99-point-something percent. That's a good argument, and it's, um, it's invalid because we're dealing with very good probability, but still slightly less than 100% probability. It's invalid, unsound, but it's strong, and it's cogent because the premises are true. And if that's the case... What we have here is an argument that's very strong. The probability is 99 point something percent. But what if I tell you 60% um, uh, of Pixar movies have been great. Not just good, but magnificent. 60% of Pixar movies have been magnificent. So the next Pixar movie will probably be magnificent. Well, that's a strong argument. It establishes, given that the premises are true, its conclusion with the probability of 60%. Well, 60% is not bad. And it makes a strong argument, but it's a lot less strong than the other one. 50.01% still makes a strong argument. Oh, and actually, while we're on that topic, some strong arguments might not be strong enough. And a lot of it depends on the consequences. Uh, five out of six odds, really good odds for a Pixar movie. If five out of six Pixar movies are ones you've liked and... You're trying to decide whether spending some money on the next Pixar movie is, is likely to pay off. It'll likely be a good movie. You won't have wasted two hours of your time at a certain number of dollars or depending on where you're watching this. I don't know, rupees, dirhams, or, or whatever else. If you're trying to determine whether the next Pixar movie is worth some time and money on your part, five out of six odds is terrific. But if it's five out of six odds for whether there's an empty chamber in the gun you're pointing at your head because... Uh, you're playing Russian roulette. Five out of six odds is not good. Not good at all. Five out of six odds contextually <laughs> could make a world of difference. Five out of six probability is technically strong, but not nearly strong enough uh, if you're putting your life in your hands. And I don't advise playing Russian roulette. Five out of six odds is pretty good for spending two hours and a few dollars or rupees on a Pixar movie. Um, but again, that's your choice and you don't, I don't know, you might know what percentage of Pixar movies you've liked.